Hi folks, Photo Fisher here again. In this video I'll be doing a mega multi-tool review, 25 models in all. At the end I'll reveal my top 10 models and why. My top 10 list might surprise you. And please note that I'm reviewing these multi-tools with camping, hiking, fishing, hunting in mind. Occasionally I'll mention a multi-tool in this review best suited for another purpose. I've backpacked nearly 3,000 miles in Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado's Indian Peaks Wilderness area. All to research and write these two books on fly fishing those areas. On every trip I took a multi-tool, but not always the same one. I've used most all tools in some way or another over that time. Some tools more than others. Surprisingly, I used a saw blade and scissors more frequently than I would ever have imagined. All models reviewed here were purchased with my own personal money, so nothing really has influenced my reviews. The review focuses on the current top three multi-tool manufacturers. Leatherman, Gerber, and Victorinox. I didn't review Schrade tools, for example. You'll notice that some of the models I review will use stock photo images versus the real thing. Well, for those, I found I didn't need to keep them in my collection, so I've eBayed them already. There are a few best-in-class design elements I look for when reviewing a multi-tool. First, I like a mechanism for all tools that lock into place when deployed. I like rounded edges on the handles on all sides, whether open or closed. I like that a ballistics nylon or a leather sheath is included. I like driver bit options, but not necessarily included, and I'll explain why in a minute. Comprehensive multi-tools should give you around 17 to 19 functions. I look for a median price point around $80 US, and that will give you one heck of a multi-tool. I like a multi-tool to weigh around 7 to 8 ounces, 200 to 225 grams. I like to have the option of two sizes of Phillips and straight blade drivers, small and large. I like needle nose pliers that have pipe gripping capability. And I like replaceable wire cutting blades. I like the working blades to be around 3 inches or so. Any shorter and it makes cutting difficult. I'm not a big fan of serrated blades. They are hard to sharpen at home unless you have the right tools to do so. And I'm not really a big fan of driver bits. They're just something else to lose, but they do offer great flexibility. So let's get started with each multi-tool review in alphabetical order. I cannot see a significant tool and construction difference between the suspension and this model to substantiate a 66% price increase in MSRP. Unless, of course, you feel an urge to support the Gerber marketing budget and Bear Grylls wallet. The tool does have rubberized grips, which is a nice upgrade from the suspension. It is a tad lighter than the suspension model and both offer one hand operation of the primary working blades. There are much better values and tools to choose from and at prices that won't make you scratch your head and wonder if you just got had. What I like about this model is the sheath is included and scissors are quite solid and on the larger side compared to most multi-tools. It's slightly lighter than the suspension model and the primary working blades can be opened with one hand. What I don't like about this model is the typical Gerber design has an awkwardly large form factor when closed. You pay a premium to get the Bear Grylls name, and knife blades are a tad short to be useful for demanding jobs. The included sheath is constructed of thinner woven nylon compared to other models. I suspect it won't hold up to rigorous outdoor and backcountry use. The locking mechanism is awkward to use, especially when your hands are wet, and it requires two hands to unlock a selected tool. The rubberized midsection of the tool grips provide little added grip purchase in my opinion. And the can opener has a blunt blade and is not sharp enough to pierce a can lid. The Gerber diesel is closely aligned to compete with similar Leatherman models like the popular Wave and Wave Plus. And at about $10 less, it may be a good value for Gerber aficionados. It even weighs exactly the same at 8.5 ounces. Given all things equal between the Gerber Diesel and similar Victorinox and Leatherman models, the Gerber takes third place. Lower manufacturing tolerances, difficulty with one hand operation, and a run of the mill nylon sheath suggest this model is best for weekenders that won't have demanding situations and will stash it away in the truck as a backup multi tool. What I like about this unit is the saw blade is one of the larger ones found in multi tools. And the sides of the tools have icons to indicate which blade is tucked away inside. 
Compared to other Gerber models, the diesel is really a solid build. It may not have the manufacturing tolerances of other models, however. All tools lock in place, but only one at a time. What I don't like about this unit is when the unit is folded, the construction seems a tad underwhelming. The plier handles tend to wiggle too much for my taste. When open, the spring assist locking mechanism shows the exposed spring. What happens if that spring is jarred loose and lost? The inside tools cannot be accessed unless the plier head is deployed. The MP600 is a standard issue tool for the military. There is not just one model of the MP600, however. The basic tools remain standard in most models, with variations available such as blunt nose pliers, replaceable blade wire cutters, black oxide versus stainless steel, berry compliant sheaths, blasting cap crimper, and cable cutting blade. The Pro Scout model has changeable main blades, and there is a bladeless model available as well. This tool is certainly a workhorse and closer in design, footprint, and function to the competitive Leatherman models. It is not as chunky and certainly more lightweight compared to the commercial version Truss, Suspension, and Bear Grylls Ultimate. What I like about this unit is one hand operation is much easier compared to the diesel. All tools lock in place, but only one at a time. It has replaceable wire cutting blades. Serrated and straight blades are both nice to have, but no saw. And like the diesel model, when open, the spring assist locking mechanism shows the exposed spring. If that spring comes loose, then what happens? And you cannot access any of the working blades unless the pliers are deployed. Every part of the suspension is an upgrade from the Gerber truss. The suspension is equal to the Bear Grylls Ultimate model except for the name branding. All in all, this tool has a reasonable set of features, especially for the low price of $30 MSRP. Despite it being heavier and having a typical Gerber clunky form factor, this is not a bad multi-tool to have around the house. I think there are better options for backcountry use, however. For example, the Leatherman Wingman is at the same price point with similar tool lineup and is lighter in weight. What I like about this unit is the sheath is included, and it has spring-assisted pliers. There's markings on the outside to indicate what type of blade it is inside once you fold it out. Scissors are quite solid, and the finish and craftsmanship is a definite upgrade from the truss. What I don't like about this unit is the typical Gerber design has an awkwardly large form factor when closed. It's heavy, despite the skeletized exterior frame, and the working blades are some of the shortest on the market. I think the included sheath is constructed of thinner woven nylon than comparable models, and I suspect it won't hold up to rigorous outdoor and backcountry use. It also has a limited set of tool blades for being a heavy, full-size multi-tool. The Gripper Truss is best used for everyday and light camping use, but may not be the best option for extended backcountry trips or demanding conditions. It's definitely a great tool to keep in a vehicle or backpack for emergency situations. The tool is on the larger and heavy side, and it's not suited for smaller hands. The grip is rather uncomfortable when closed due to stark edges, but when open to expose the pliers, the exterior casing is rounded to provide a more comfortable grip. The spring-loaded tool lock system is rendered out of commission if the little internal spring breaks or locks in place with rust or debris. With that said, it is reasonably unlikely the locking system will fail during normal use, and if it does, the warranty should cover it. What I like about this unit is that it is lightweight, and the spring-loaded pliers are quite useful. It's easy to handle, even with gloves on, and the wire stripper is a thoughtful feature that doesn't take any extra space. It has a useful selection of three flathead drivers, and there's thoughtful design of each tool, combining several functions into one blade. What I don't like about this tool is the typical Gerber design has an awkwardly large form factor when closed. I believe the construction is pedestrian quality, and the spring-loaded tool locks, well, what happens when the spring breaks? Knife blades are a tad short to be useful for any demanding job, and there's no small Phillips driver, only a medium size. Leatherman claims that the Blast has the most requested components in one package. If so, it becomes odd to find that this model is no longer made. Outside of having an all, every mission-critical tool needed on an extended backcountry trip is included in this multi-tool. For the weight-conscious backpacker, this is the go-to choice for a solidly built multi-tool with a long knife blade, meaning you don't have to carry an extra folding knife. 
it's hard not to consider this as your one go-to tool for day trekking or multi-day backpacking excursions. What I like about this tool is it has long working blades and the Zytel handle, which is basically plastic, those inserts make the edges comfortable to handle when it's used as pliers. It's also ideal for smaller hands. It has a very solid build and the blades lock into place and won't wobble from side to side. What I don't like about this model is it has no awl, which is handy to have for tent and leather repair. And this model is now retired from the current Leatherman lineup. There's no denying that the Charge series of Leathermans are built with a lifetime longer than yours and mine. Based upon the Wave platform, the Charge series upgrades with standard replaceable wire cutting blades and a bit driver system. If you are tough on tools, then the titanium version, albeit expensive, is a no-brainer. I still find an awl and a medium-sized Phillips screwdriver to be very useful in the backcountry, and it's disappointing to see this model does not include it. However, one small tool can be overlooked given the added benefit of having a multi-bit driver system on board. No Phillips are included in the bit set, however. If keeping a sharp edge is critically important to you, then the upgraded stainless steel for the primary cutting blade is also an added benefit. No doubt this is a beast of a tool with good extensibility and a rich onboard feature set. If the price scares you away, the Wave Series or the new Super Tool 300 might be a better option for you. There's lots to like about this model. It has upgraded 154cm stainless steel knife blades. It's extremely solidly built and the blades and tools won't wobble from side to side. It adds a wire stripper and a cutting hook compared to the Wave Plus model and it has one of the longest working blades of any multi-tool on the market. It includes 12 driver bits and a holder, although there is no Phillips drivers. It includes a pocket clip and a lanyard ring that you have to assemble yourself. And all tools lock in place. What I don't like about this model is there is no awl. And scissors are on the small side, but they do get the job done. And if you don't carry the bit driver set with you, you're limited to a medium Phillips and flathead driver. And this model is pricey compared to the similar Leatherman Wave models. The Leatherman Juice C2 is one of Leatherman's classic and highly usable EUPCs, everyday urban pocket carry. If you can find an older model, the ones without the scalloping on the colorful handle, you'll get longer and wider working blades. This would make a great multi-tool for stashing in the cooler, a day pack, or in an outdoor concert wine cooler because of the corkscrew. Even those teetering on the edge of ultralight backpacking could pinch ounces elsewhere to justify carrying 4.4 ounces in a tool that can save the day with mission critical gear repairs on the trail. If you can do without a corkscrew, the S2 model gives you the scissors instead. What I like about this model is that it's very lightweight. And the knife blade is slightly longer than the S2 model. It's very solidly built and the blades and tools won't wobble from side to side. And it has anodized exterior tool plates. What I don't like about this model is sacrificing utilitarian scissors that's found in the S2 model for a core screw in this model may not be the best trade-off for an all-purpose EUPC. The tools don't lock in place, but they do snap fit very tightly when open. And the main knife blade is somewhat thin for heavy duty jobs. Overall, the working blades are shorter and wider, top to bottom, in the current version. Older versions like this one have longer and thinner top to bottom blades, including the saw, a serrated, and a straight blade knife option. Combine the Juice S2 and the Juice C2, and you come up with the CS4. It has everything you need to fix, saw, cut, screw, and open anything. The relatively lightweight form factor makes this an easy everyday carry choice for short backpack excursions or long day treks. The thin straight edge knife blade and saw might give you fits if you need to lean upon them to do a job. They just might break. Maybe this is the reason Leatherman opted to go with a shorter, more stout tool set in the current version. This tool meets all my requirements for a backpacking multi-tool. And because of that, it has been on a fair share of my backcountry excursions over the years. What I like about this unit is that it's very lightweight and very solidly built. It has anodized tool exterior plates on the older models. And it has all the essentials that 
I personally need and use on a backcountry excursion and all a saw, plier blades, some scissors, and a can opener. Some of the downsides to this multi-tool is that the tool blades don't lock in place but they do snap fit very tightly when opened. The main knife blade and the saw is somewhat thin for doing heavy duty jobs. And the blades are shorter and wider top to bottom in the current version. Older versions have longer and thinner top to bottom saw, serrated, and straight blade knives. The Juice S2 is one of Leatherman's classic and highly functional EUPCs, everyday urban pocket carry. This would make a great multi-tool for stashing in a vehicle, a day pack, or as a Boy Scout's next best friend. The small lightweight footprint is packed with the absolute essentials. The Juice S2 model is a great low cost choice for general backpacking needs. If you can do without scissors, the C2 model gives you a corkscrew instead. Swapping out the corkscrew and replacing with scissors raises the MSRP from $40 to $70 US, making it a head scratcher why this scissor model costs $30 more. Still, this is one of Leatherman's all time great pocket multi tool designs. It would rank on par with the highly touted Juice C2 if it weren't for the 40% premium to have the scissors instead of a corkscrew. It's very lightweight for all the tools that you get. It has extremely good solid build and the blades and tools won't wobble from side to side. The orange sides make it very easy to find if you drop it on the ground or in the woods as opposed to the granite gray option and the anodized tool exterior plates are a nice touch. The downsides to this model is that the working blade is too short for extended camping excursions. For example, it won't span across the standard log of summer sausage. Tools don't lock into place, but they do snap fit very tightly when opened. The main knife blade is somewhat thin for heavy duty jobs and may bend if you really put pressure on it. Overall, the blades are shorter and wider top to bottom in the current version, the ones with the scalloping on the sides. Older versions have longer and thinner top to bottom blades. Just when we thought the original Swiss Army knife packed the most tools into one tidy package, Leatherman ups the game with the XE6 model. Leatherman says it's the beeviest in the Juice lineup. Most tools and blades are accessible when folded closed. However, the screwdrivers are not. No tools lock into place, but there is a solid click open feel when the blades are folded open for use. This is a very capable camp companion, as there is almost no tool left out. Unfortunately, this model is no longer in the current lineup. The very capable CS4 model is the closest model to the XE6. What I like about this multi-tool is that it packs a bunch of useful tools in one small package. It has a very solid build and the blades and tools won't wobble from side to side when you use them. It's lightweight considering the number of tools included and most tools are accessible while closed except for the driver blades. The downsides to this model are that the blades are shorter and wider top to bottom in this current version, the version with scalloping on the sides. Older versions have longer and thinner top to bottom blades. This model is now retired from the current lineup and the tools don't lock in place but they do snap fit very tightly when opened. The main knife and saw blades are somewhat thin for heavy duty jobs in my opinion. The Leatherman rebar is a solidly built tool that has all the essentials for backcountry use. At first glance it's hard to distinguish the rebar from several other Leatherman models hence it tends to get lost in the expansive Leatherman lineup. It is similar to the current model Super Tool 300 but lighter by 3.5 ounces. So it's a backcountry weight to tool winner in this aspect alone. The no longer available Leatherman Blast is also a close contender in its tool assortment compared to the rebar. Ultimately, if you like what the Super Tool 300 offers, but the price and weight scare you away, the rebar is your tool of choice. There's lots to like about this model. It's very close to the Super Tool 300, although it doesn't have the smallest sized flathead driver like the 300 does. It's lightweight at under 7 ounces, which is 2 ounces lighter than the Super Tool 300, and it has a similar tool set. It has replaceable wire cutters. It's available in the knifeless version, in case you want to travel with it. 
And it's really sort of a mashup between the Super Tool 300, the original Leatherman, and the Blast. There are a few downsides to this model. First, there are no scissors, and the tools are not accessible from the outside. You have to open the unit to get to the working blades. The working blades tend to be on the shorter side of things compared to the Super Tool 300, for example. This model tends to get lost and overlooked in the Leatherman tool lineup. Other Leatherman models are similar with a feature or two more. A good knife and strap cutter are essential tools around the warehouse. The Leatherman Rev model offers those and a few extra solid tool options, like a Phillips and a flathead driver, a bottle opener, and a file slash ruler. All these tools pack in at under 6 ounces, and under $40 MSRP, it makes this an exceptional value in a pocket carry around the factory or warehouse. There's lots to like about this unit. At under $40 MSRP, it is one of the best EDC everyday carry values on the market. It has super smooth opening and closing tools, and all the tools lock in place. It has a pocket clip which is included. It's solid as a brick poop hut, it's very lightweight, and has a very thin profile. The downsides to this model is that a combo blade might be useful in a tool like this. The pliers are a tad smaller than the sister models, the Sidekick and the Wingman. And the pliers are not open assisted. It has fixed wire cutters with no replaceable blade cutting edges. Aside from not having an all-in scissors, which are tools I tend to use regularly on the trail. This tool contends for the top spot of most features for the least money and being a lightweight to boot. I wouldn't hesitate to take this on an extended backcountry trip knowing that I have all the core necessary tools at my disposal. This is an ideal alternative to an everyday carry knife, especially with the optional pocket clip. What I like about this model is that the pliers are a tad larger than most models tested in this video. The pliers are open assisted with a leaf spring and the outer casing is a tad thinner than other models in this lineup which reduces weight yet still feels solid as any other model. The downsides to this model is that it has no scissors or all which are very handy tools to have in the backcountry. It has fixed wire cutters which aren't replaceable and only the two main working blades lock into place. The remaining tools just firmly snap into place. Survival Preparedness Tool. That's what comes to mind when you look at this multi-tool. It comes with a standard size flathead and Phillips driver bit and can take other size bits for smaller or larger jobs. Additional bits are an optional purchase. The super smooth operation and extremely solid build won't have you wanting for any other tool. If it had scissors, which is good for cutting repair tape and leather and fabric, it would make my list for an absolutely perfect backcountry excursion companion. With this tool, you can start fires, stitch canvas and leather, cut a sliver of summer sausage, saw small wood sections for the tent stove, tighten loose and loosen hardware with screwdrivers and box wrenches, perform light hammering and tamping, cut and bend wire, plier the heck out of anything, and most importantly, open food cans and bottles of your favorite trail beverage. Even though it doesn't have one of my most used tools, which are scissors, it's hard not to consider this as my newest best friend on a backcountry trip. There's lots to like about this Leatherman Signal model. It has a removable diamond coated sharpener which allows you to sharpen the blades on the tool. It has a very solid build and the blades and tools won't wobble from side to side. They all lock into place and they have super smooth opening and closing. It has a pocket clip and a carabiner to affix it to a belt or backpack. It has replaceable wire cutting blades and a ferrocerium fire starting rod and a signal whistle. It also has a handy little clip on the back side of the carabiner to keep the tool from opening when affixed via the carabiner to a backpack or belt loop. There are a few downsides. I wish it had scissors and it's a bit on the heavy side compared to other leather and multi-tools at about 7.6 ounces. 
The two things used most often on a farm or a ranch is a knife and a pair of pliers. This lightweight tool has these in spades. Throw in a bit driver with medium sized flathead and Phillips heads and you have the core basic needs covered on the farm. There are other multi-tool options better suited for backcountry use, but for lightweight option carry that is solidly built, this tool could be considered for a short backcountry trip. What I like about this unit is that all the tools have super smooth opening and closing action. They all lock into place and it has a pocket clip and a carabiner. It includes Phillips and flathead drivers which store in the handle and it's very lightweight. The downside to this tool is that it has a limited tool set, but then again it is supposed to be a skeletal. tool. The combo blade is on the short side of things but serviceable, likewise with the plier jaws. The Super Tool 300 is a beast of a tool that is built to withstand most anything you can throw at it. Being so sturdy and big, it can be almost too big for the small handed folks. Outside of not having scissors, this tool is nearly perfect for rugged backcountry adventures or around the ranch and farm. It's a few ounces too heavy for those weight conscious backpackers. You may want to look at the Juice XE6 at 3 ounces less with similar features. Or the ultra lightweight SOG Power Pint coming at 4.2 ounces. This would be the tool of choice on a backcountry hunt or a base camp companion. There's lots to like about this tool. It has all the features of any model in the Leatherman lineup, including a large plier set, replaceable wire cutting blades, and a great assortment of tools. Saw, serrated blade, longer fixed Phillips screwdriver, a file, a really long working blade here. And while it's one of the largest multi-tools available, it will handle most anything thrown at it. There's not much to dislike about this tool. It's a beast of a tool coming in at nearly 10 ounces, but while this is heavy, it may be a good thing too. And it has no scissors, but now I'm nitpicking. The Leatherman Surge is a near perfect backcountry tool. It has features necessary for on the trail repair, an awl, a saw, a small eyeglass driver, large scissors, and an interchangeable blade system, which comes standard with the saw blade. A file is optional. If it were a few ounces less in weight, it would be the perfect mix of price, features, weight, and performance. If you want similar features with much less weight, consider the Leatherman Wave Plus. What I like about this unit is that it's one of the largest multi-tools available. It will handle most anything thrown at it. And it has very large working blades, so there's really not a need to carry a separate knife. It takes extensibility to a whole new level with interchangeable driver bits and a saw or a file blade. And the scissors are the largest and the beefiest in the multi-tool market. The downsides to this model is there's no lanyard loop. It's one of the heaviest multi-tools on the market. And if you want the extra driver bits, that's another 1.5 ounces to carry. Those are an optional purchase. The wire cutting blades are fixed and they're not replaceable. The original Leatherman Wave is Leatherman's most popular tool and for good reason. It contains 16 of the most useful tools for backpacking and camping. The rounded handles are smooth and comfortable to use even when placing the tool under stress in a demanding situation. It even contains a small flathead screwdriver for repairing eyeglasses and the like. This has been my go-to tool for over 2,000 backpacking miles, and I've put all the tools to use at one time or another. Unfortunately, the Wave is now retired from the Leatherman lineup, replaced by the Wave Plus. The essential difference is trading out large scissors and fixed blade drivers for smaller scissors and an interchangeable bit driver system. I'm not convinced the design trade-outs are necessarily a plus. If you can find one online at a reasonable price, grab the older version. What I like about this model is that it's a half ounce lighter than the Wave Plus, and it's a very comprehensive tool set, basically covering all the essentials you need in the backcountry. The scissors are quite beefy and on the larger side, and all four working blades lock into place. The rest of the tools firmly snap into place. Again, 
the downsides are few. It might be considered on the heavy side for the gram shaving backpackers, so you may want to consider the Juice series instead. There are no exterior markings to identify the serrated blade from the straight blade, so you may fumble to find the right blade at the first time. And only the four cutting, sawing, and filing blades lock open. The rest of the tools firmly snap into place. Compared to the original Wave, the Leatherman Wave Plus trades out large scissors for smaller ones, adds a replaceable interchangeable tool system, which includes wire cutting blades, Phillips and flathead drivers, and eyeglass drivers. It adds a ruler across the entire length of the open tool. This tool is quite handy for those who have a need to perform repairs in the field on small electronics, watches, eyeglasses, and other modern day camping gadgets. It's solidly built and is very comfortable to use. There's no wonder that this multi-tool is Leatherman's best seller of all time. What I like about this unit is that it's a very solid build and the blades and tools won't wobble from side to side. It's 100% stainless steel and the replaceable wire cutter blades and screwdriver bits are a nice feature. All the tools will lock into place. The downsides are far and few between. There are no exterior markings to differentiate the serrated blade from the straight blade, so you might fumble to find the right one the first time. And the edges of the handle are not rounded and less comfortable when closed. However, when you use the pliers, the rounded sides appear and it's much more comfortable to use. If you work in a factory, warehouse, shipping, receiving, or pick and package facility, then this is a perfect companion to have. This tool has everything you need and nothing more, keeping the weight to a reasonable 6.8 ounces for this pocket tool. The box and strap cutting tool is somewhat unique in multi-tools and definitely comes in handy when opening boxes and cutting through pallet strapping. The large scissors are handy when a precise cut is needed, where a knife blade might be too awkward to use. One-handed knife blade operation makes this tool just as easy to use as a dedicated pocket knife. The general assortment of driver blades, can opener, and file round out this must-have for any factory or warehouse worker. What I like about this unit is that it's lightweight for being a pocket carry full-size tool. The pliers are a tad larger than most models tested in this video, and the pliers are open assisted with a leaf spring. It has an included pocket clip, and the scissors are on the large side. All the blades on the exterior lock open. The downsides to this model is that the combo straight and serrated blade can be difficult to sharpen and it has fixed wire cutters with no replaceable cutting edges. Access to the additional tool blades requires the pliers to be open. The strength of the SOG Power Access Deluxe is in the compound leverage pliers and the 13-bit magnetic driver set. It is well thought out and is a very smooth operator. It packs a serious amount of tools and features into a package that is a tad longer than most, but surprisingly middle of the pack when it comes to weight. At a reasonable price point, the overall value factor tops the charts for full-size multi-tools. Despite it not having scissors, it more than makes up for it by including magnetic bits for flatheads, Phillips, and star drivers, all conveniently storable in a sturdy ballistics nylon sheath. The working blades are a tad thinner, however, and can flex side to side. So for heavy duty jobs, this may not be the choice. On the upside, if you can avoid losing any of the individual driver bits, there's nothing you can't cut, saw, crimp, screw, tighten, open, or repair on an extended backcountry excursion. What I like about this unit is that it is a smooth operator. It uses compound leverage mechanical operation to open, which is unique among multi-tools. It includes a 13 big magnetic hex driver selection with flathead, Phillips, and star drivers. It has a stone washed stainless steel material and it cuts down on glare and flash, which is a great feature when hunting. It also has one of the longest knife and saw blades available on the market. The blade lock system is released by pulling a tab open versus pushing, which is a more traditional way of a, releasing a locked blade. While not intuitive at first, it is quite easy to use. All tools are accessible when the unit is closed. And the ballistic nylon case 
provides room for driver bit storage, something that the comparable Leatherman models don't typically include. The downside to this model is that it contains no scissors, and the pliers, wire cutters, and hex bit holder would be rendered useless if one of the replaceable rivets holding the cam mechanism broke or fell out. Also, you need to keep a good grip pressure to ensure that magnetic bit drivers won't fall out under stressed use. While folded tightly closed, they're locked in place. However, open just a little bit, they easily just come out. The working blades are skinny compared to similar sized multi-tools, and the working blades can flex from side to side, which does not give reassurance that the blade won't break or cut the hand on a slip. The edges of the grip are not completely rounded and can be somewhat uncomfortable due to some of the grip having square edges. Despite not having a saw blade, which isn't a bad thing for this tool, the selection of tools in the saw power pint covers all the needs a weekend backpacker would face. Having a rope cutter is a nice feature not found in many multi-tools twice its size, and the scissors are quite solid given their small stature. I'd like to see another tool included instead of having separate bottle and can openers such as a medium-sized flathead driver. I doubt the extreme ultralight backpacker would even consider carrying a multi-tool at all, instead opting for a small, thin, fixed-blade knife. But I surmise general ultralight backpackers would find this multi-tool incredibly valuable to carry, especially at 4.2 ounces, 119 grams. What I like about this model is its super smooth operation, utilizing a compound leverage mechanism. The stone-washed stainless steel material cuts down on glare and flash, which is a great feature when hunting. All tools are accessible when the unit is closed, and it seems more solidly built than the larger SOG models, but its compact size can also lend to that solid feel. Just like its bigger brother, it can hold an optional magnetic bit driver as well. And the pocket clip is a nice touch. The downsides of this model is the can and bottle opener are separate tools and the pliers portion of the tool has to be partially open to release the outer tool lock. Before Leatherman came along in the early 1980s this was the one tool to have to cover most of life's challenges. The tools are meant to get the job done but are not built to conquer every demanding situation. A nitpick is that this tool does not have a small flathead jeweler screwdriver, which could be useful for repairing eyeglasses and the like. This is something I would expect in a generalist household multi-tool like this one. If you want a corkscrew, you're going to have to upgrade to a larger, heavier model. All in all, this is a great tool to have in the kitchen miscellaneous drawer to tackle everyday tasks around the house. What I like about this unit is that it's very lightweight. It includes the tools that cover a wide variety of situations and needs, and really nothing more. It has a classic design, and it's easy to see if dropped on the ground. And who doesn't appreciate a small set of tweezers and a toothpick? The downsides to this model is the sheath is not included, and this plastic housing can crack and chip off over time. It has no saw blade which is probably not necessary for a household multi-tool, but it does include a small working blade and a larger working blade. However, there is no serrated blade on this model. It tends to be wider than the comparative competitive models, and it can be rather slippery to hold when wet. The wire cutters tend to be on the small side, and the pliers are small and awkward to use for any really serious job. Victorinox tools are very solidly built, making it a top choice contender for any backpacking or hunting adventure. The weight of this tool knocks it out of the running for those looking to shave ounces or grams in a rucksack, especially with strong competitors from Leatherman, Sog, and Gerber that pack the same tool punch in a package that weighs a few ounces less. This tool is ideal for car camping or stashing in a day pack. It has a simplistic, boxy style that is very iconic Victorinox. I wouldn't be afraid of packing it on a long trek of weeks to months due to its solid build and obvious durability, which can give you peace of mind that you'll have a tool to depend on when you need it. The downsides to this model is that it's 
big and it's heavy compared to competitive models, although it's on par with the Leatherman Supertool 300. The very boxy design gives it uncomfortable edges when closed. The rounded edges appear when the pliers are exposed. There's no lanyard ring, and only a large Phillips screwdriver head is included, not a smaller one. And it has separate working blades for a bottle opener and a can opener. Maybe combine these two and include a saw blade instead. So now let's get to my top 10 multi-tools. It's a close race to the top, and any one of these can be your go-to multi-tool choice. And if I were to sort them, here's how they'd rank. Coming in at number 10 is the Leatherman Signal. For a survival tool, this is the one to carry. It's built like a tank, and although it's one of the higher priced multi-tools, it is well apportioned toward every specific use and user. As a general carry multi-tool, there might be others to consider. Coming in at number 9 is the Victorinox Swiss Tool. It has an unbelievable build quality and a great assortment of tools. It's sized to fit larger hands and tasks. This model would score in my top five, but it already has the hefty price point of $135 US. With that said, it keeps the weight in check at a respectable 10.2 ounces, or 290 grams. The Leatherman Surge has the feature set to be the best backcountry multi-tool available, even at a price point of $115 US. If it were lighter, it would be hands down the best there is, but at nearly 12 ounces, 340 grams, it's the heaviest one of the 25 models reviewed. And this is why this model comes in at number 8. Coming in at number 7 on the list is the Leatherman Juice S2. It has a small lightweight footprint and is packed with the absolute essentials. The Juice S2 model is a great low cost choice for the average weekend backpacker, which is really the primary audience for a multi-tool. And the primary reason this comes in at number 7. The best selling Leatherman multi-tool of all time is reason enough to make this your multi-tool of choice. It's not the lightest on this list at nearly 9 ounces, roughly 250 grams, and not the cheapest, but it sits right in the middle of price, weight, and feature set. Thus, this model comes in at number 6. The SOG Power Access Deluxe comes in at number 5 on my top 10 multi-tool list. Coming in at a respectable 8.7 ounces, roughly 250 grams, and at a very competitive price of $70 US, it's a good value buy amongst multi-tools. And it has an impressive assortment of tool options, although the build quality slightly lags Leatherman and Victorinox. Coming in at number 4 is the Leatherman Juice XE6. How can any more tools be packed into such a small package? It may be overkill, but you have it all with this multi-tool, and at a reasonable price point of $89 US, and out of a weight of 6.8 ounces, only 190 grams. This multi-tool definitely delivers getting the most bang for your buck, and reason enough to make it number 4 in this list. The Juice CS4 is packed with features in a small package, and at a reasonable price point of $80 US. It will cover most any general duty situation, from urban to farm to backcountry. It comes in at number 3, just slightly ahead of the Juice XE6, because at $10 US less in price, it has all the basic working tools covered, and is over an ounce lighter, roughly 30 grams. The Leatherman Super Tool 300 comes in at number 2 on my list. You can't beat the features in a solid build at a killer price point of $80 US. It would be a number 1 contender if it were lighter, as it's a bit on the heavy side at 10 ounces, 280 grams which adds a quarter of a pound over the similarly appointed Leatherman Rebar. And speaking of, the Leatherman Rebar comes in at number one because it balances weight, price, build quality, and functional factors better than any other tool reviewed. At $70 US and only 6.5 ounces, which is 185 grams, the price versus weight versus what you get factor for a full-size multi-tool is uber high. Given these factors, I can overlook that I need to open the tool to access the working blades, and they aren't readily accessible otherwise. Think of this model as the Leatherman Super Tool Lite. Well, there you have it. My top 10 list. While it was easy to choose which models made the top 10, it was much, much more difficult to rank them. A case could be made for each one being a top contender. Maybe you found your favorite tool that made it on my top 10 list. 
maybe not. So I hope you found this review useful, and if so, consider giving my channel a like. Thanks for watching. Bye.